So I want to do an interact mechanic for this door. Using the key, I want to be able to unlock the door, but the player will not be able to go through the door without a key. Select the door, add in a plane axis empty, then move it to where the door is going to pivot. We'll move it over to the right side, right here, and just kind of put it right, right in between right there, and then parent the door to the empty. Now we have a door hinge. So we want the player to only be able to open the door from this side. Now let's click on the door hinge and the door and press M, new collection, door. Because we definitely want to be able to duplicate these when we're done. And let's add a new script. Call this script locked door. We have the cursor still selected to the door, so let's add another mesh. We're going to add a cube, make it about the same size as the door and about the same height. Realistically, we only want to open the door from one side, so we'd probably make it about like this and then put it over here. For now, we're just going to make it big enough that you can access from both sides because we're going to be going around. To make this less cluttered and easier to work with, click on the object settings and scroll down till you get to viewport display, go from texture to wire. Cool thing about this is if we press play, it'll automatically be invisible. So we don't have to worry about making it invisible later. Let's go to the physics properties and there's a couple of options we can do. For now, we're just going to leave it on static, make it an actor, a ghost, and give it collision bounds. Now that we have everything set up, let's start with the logic. We're going to add a property to our collision box and this property is going to be called open, then set it to a boolean. So we have a true or false. What we're going to do is we're going to add a collision and we'll set this collision to once. Collider is going to be self and the object we want to collide with is the player. When we do this, we want to set property. We want to set the property and the property we're setting is self open and make it a boolean and we're setting it to true. We'll do evaluate property. The property we want to evaluate is on self open and set it to boolean. If this is equal to true, then what we want to do is apply rotation. So if true, apply rotation and we're not going to apply it to self. We want to apply it to our hinge empty. So let's get parent. So we get the parent. We're going to connect the parent object to the object of the rotation. Our collider box is connected to the hinge empty. So this will be the empty that is rotated. You may have to check out which direction it's rotating, but for me, I'm going to do negative three. So whenever this is equal to true, then we're going to rotate negative three degrees every frame. We add our door instance object, set origin to volume, and then move it up. Let's make sure to spell it right. <laughs> Player is capitalized for me. So when we walk into the door, it starts applying a rotation, but we don't want it to rotate forever, <laughs> obviously. So let's add a timer and say, whenever this property is set to true, start a timer. I'm going to set to 0.65. And then when this happens, just duplicate the set property and set it to false. So when we walk into the door, it'll go and then it'll open and then stop. We obviously don't want it to keep going every time you walk into it. So let's do a remove object. So we'll remove an object and the object we want to remove is self. We just want to remove the hitbox. So when we walk into the door, it'll go, it'll stop. The door is now a static object that can't be interacted with anymore. So that is our door. We only want the player to unlock the door when facing the lock. So let's edit this hitbox. So we'll scale it down and then bring it inside. So the player has to interact with the lock to open the door. We're not quite done with this because we still need to be able to use our key in order to open this door. In order to use our key, what we're going to have to do is go into our logic here and then add an and. Plug that in there. Duplicate this evaluate property. And then if true, then we will rotate. So we need to go to the HUD and we need to select our counter. So we got our key counter. Make sure we select that. Deselect the self check and then we're going to select our key counter. We want the text and we want this to say integer. If this is greater than zero, then we can open the door. Let's spawn a new door here and then we'll press play. Oh, way too small. <laughs> Can't see what I'm doing. So if we walk into the door, nothing will happen. If I grab the key and it is now one in my inventory and I walk into the door, nothing happens because I'm a filthy casual, I guess. So all we do is put this and in the right spot and it should work. So let's bring it up and we'll say and. So we'll collision and evaluate the property. Make sure we have the key counter and the text is greater than zero. 
So we walk into the door, nothing happens. We open the door with the key. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes if it doesn't work, it just means that you don't have the right thing hooked up to the right spot. That's all there is to it. Now we need to take that counter and make it zero again. So we're gonna subtract, modify the property. So modify property and come over to the end of our chain here. And when we remove the object, just set the key counter text and minus one. Walk into the door, nothing happens. Grab the key, go into the door and it opens. And then when it ends, in fact, actually let's put it at the start. We want instant when you walk into the door, then close. Grab the key, walk into the door. We lose a key out of our counter and the door opens. <laughs> so that's how you do a key system. Now that we have the door done, let's start on the ladder. So let's switch over to the player movement. Select the ladder and press M. Let's start by doing a new collection and calling this one ladder. Put the origin in the center of the ladder and then add a cube. Then make this cube about the size of the ladder right there. And then we'll scale it down and just put it in front. A little bit bigger. There we go. And let's call this ladder start. Ladder start. And we'll do another one. So just go all the way up and put it right about there for now. And we'll call this ladder end. And then let's go over to the object properties, go down, texture, wire, and do that for both of them. Go to the physics properties, and we're just gonna do actor, ghost, and collision bounds. Do that for the other one as well, actor, ghost, collision bounds. Now, where the ladder start is, select that object, then add a new empty, plane axis empty, and we're gonna call this, we'll call it ladder lock. Then take all these objects, the ladder end, the ladder, the ladder start, and parent it to the ladder lock. So everything will be parented to this, just like we did with the door. Click on the ladder start, and we wanna add a property, and this is just gonna be called ladder start. You can leave it on float, it doesn't matter for these, and then ladder end. So now that we have these, these are gonna be basically, when we collide with the ladder start, it's going to lock us into a position. We won't be able to move anywhere except up and down. And then the ladder end will unlock us. So once the character gets to a certain height, it'll unlock and then the player will be able to walk forward again. Let's select the player because we need to make a is climbing. So we'll say new property is climbing. I'm just gonna copy that, make this a Boolean because it's gonna be a true or false. And we'll move our keyboard active. Let's add a and evaluate property. And then if true, we'll select self and then is climbing, make this a Boolean. What we want is when the player is not climbing, we can move around normally, but then when we activate or make climbing true, uh, the player will not be able to move in the normal directions anymore. Going outside of our movement, we will add a collision and we'll set this, we'll leave it on once for now. We can select player and then if we go to ladder start as our property, make sure everything's spelled correctly. And when the player collides with ladder start, we want to set world position. So when colliding, we'll set the world position of the player and then we'll get world position and we'll plug that in there. The object that we want to get the world position of is going to be the start or the lock empty. So when we lock to the ladder, so we want to get the parent. So get parent. Since we parented all the objects to the uh, empty there, we can just connect these together. And the object we want to get is the parent of the ladder start. So we're, no matter what we do, if we have multiple object or multiple ladders in the scene, we'll be able to independently uh, lock onto them. Otherwise, it'll if you just select the empty, you'll lock onto another ladder and it'll just send you to this ladder. So we don't want that. So now that we have this, if we test the game out and we walk into it, you can see that our player gets set to that position. So when we set our when we get set to that position, we want to set the property of player is climbing boolean and we want to set that to true. So if we press play and walk into the ladder, we will no longer, I'm hitting the keys and I'm not moving around. So for what we're gonna do, let's just so select everything in the frame, shift D, and then just right click to set it back to the original, right click again, and then remove from frame, press G to grab, and we're just gonna put it underneath of our new logic. 
and we'll say we'll just check this and say if is climbing is true then we want to move it or move the player except we're going to change all of these to the z-axis duplicate the math node and put it right on the z-axis change it from subtract to add you can move this one down and then move this one to the a position of the math socket and basically what this is going to do is allow us to move up and down on the z-axis uh, no matter what key we press for the movement so if we walk up to the ladder we'll see that we now no matter what key we press we're going to be moving up or down except gravity is still being applied to us so we don't want the gravity to be applied to us so let's go gravity we'll set the gravity like so and we're going to set gravity to zero just put it above the set property and connect the set position to the set gravity so now if we press play and we go up to the ladder you can see we go up and down on the ladder if you <laughs> press the space bar for now uh, you just float forever okay so now all we have to do is set it to when we get to the top of the ladder it's going to set our gravity back to normal and I'll set our movement back to normal so we'll just grab this collision and duplicate that move it over like so and we'll just set this to ladder end so when we collide with ladder end then we're going to want the set property and the set gravity we want to set is climbing to false and set our gravity back to normal here's something that is important to know though uh, this needs to be set to a minus number and if you go to your world properties you'll see the gravity is set to 9.8 meters per second and if you set it to that here so if I go negative 9.8 and then our gravity is set back to normal it's actually slower than it originally was and that's because this is actually squared this is 9.8 squared and this logic node doesn't do that so we actually want to set this to something like 25 to go back to our original speed falling speed so if we walk up to the ladder we go up the ladder and then it'll set our gravity back to normal we're not quite getting to the top of the ladder before we fall back down so just select this guy and move it up a little bit more and just set it to where the character will seamlessly go to the top and be flush with the ground just like this to make this a little bit cleaner let's just move this over and connect it right there since some of our objects are outside of our collection just make sure that they go back into the collection so now we want to unlock from the ladder at any point so if we press spacebar we'll just unlock from the ladder let's go down grab one of these keys and then we'll do an and again and we'll say if climbing is true so we can just connect this up right here if climbing is true and in fact let's make this a little bit prettier by bringing it over here if climbing is true and the space bar is pressed or whatever key is your jump key then we will unlock from the ladder so let's just grab our two properties here duplicate them and then attach them to the and and when we press play if we lock to the ladder you can see we can climb up and down and then if we press space bar we unlock from the ladder we can jump off the ladder at any point so currently we have it set to if we just collide with the bottom of the ladder we will lock onto it you've seen that if we press play walk into it and then press space bar and we fall in we just automatically lock again so let's make an interact key so we have to interact with the ladder before we can climb it so let's just do key down again we'll just add a key down and an and connect that to the collision so we are colliding and we press the e key so key tap on the e key make sure to set this to each frame so when we're colliding it's doing it it's checking each frame for the e key to be pressed so if we press play walk into the ladder nothing's happening if we press e we lock onto the ladder and we can climb to the top now we can place this ladder anywhere we want all we have to do is add our instance of a ladder make sure to set the origin to the center of the ladder like that and we can move this ladder over to the other side of the map so now we can press play I can climb up the ladder like so we get to the top of the ladder I can walk over here and I'll jump down get to the bottom of the ladder oh I made a mistake so this is something to be aware of if you don't choose the right parent of the object if you go over to the other ladder and then select it you will go to the position of the other ladder so let's fix that really quick and that just has to do because I forgot to uh, set the colliding object so when we collide with the start object of our ladder we want to set colliding object to child object so the object we're colliding with is the ladder start and the child of that object is going to be our set position so we can walk up to the ladder lock onto the ladder 
and then we can move over to the next ladder, jump off, go over to the ladder, E to the ladder, get to the top of it, just like that. Now we can climb up and down ladders. We have a key in our inventory, so we can drop down. And then we can go into the door, open the door, and go around.